think all I need to do now is. I'm not rich. I'm not lying. Yeah, that's all I need to do. Okay. I'm not rich. I'm not lying. He is I. I am him. New so worthy. Host of I'm not rich. I'm not lying. The podcast. Um, I'm not here with the clan. I'm not here with the clan. But shout out to the clan, not the gang, because gangs get indicted you guys already know shout out to voice of reason money the producer of course today was special episode special episode we got a special guest special guest in the building special guest in the building wait hold up you said you got your aka's ready oh yeah i got a few i got a few uh oh yo what's up it's your boy rudy uh aka uh the white panther aka white boy dave <laughs> aka the blind seer uh how's it going the, Long time listener, first time caller. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, Sir Worthy. Yes, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What was that last one though? The, uh, the blind, blind seer. The blind seer. Yeah. Nice. Take some dogs with me for some time. I'll, I'll explain it to you. Nice. Tell me, who sees farther, the giant or the midget on a giant shoulder? The midget being thrown by the giant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yo, man, um, how you been, though, man? How you been, man? How's daddy life? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it is what it is. It's uh, pretty routine these days. Not a lot of sleep, but it's good, you know. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. Now, you know what's a little crazy? Maybe I'm a little crazy for saying this, but I feel men took on this whole protect women and children. Protect children and women. And with a little yeah. bit of that, now natu- I would, naturally, I would say right? that though your, your analogy about the the, the bus and the ambulance, but like I was going to use like the Titanic analogy, you know, right. women and children first. Women and children first, exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, now, I'm okay with that. In fact, but, I champion that. I think. But I think we, both those things are are connected to what you're saying about uh, legacy, about you know your DNA surviving. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We're more expendable than women. Yeah, I mean, the In woman is sense. the gateway. Right. Gate like now, now, I just think it got a little, I just think that whole um, idea just started spilling over the top a little too much, though. And then what ended up happening is guys start developing and coming up with analogies and sayings and routines and phrases and all these things now that men live by and under just to protect women not when they're not even in danger anymore. Things like <clears throat> happy wife, happy life. Does that exist? Because I don't, I don't think <laughs> like, I treat my woman pretty good. <laughs> I'm happy all the time. But I've been yeah. t- I've been told I've heard this at weddings. I've been to multiple weddings. I've heard this exactly at weddings. I've seen this idea being pushed. That's, that's the equivalent of being like it is what it is. You know, happy happy wife, happy life. Yeah. 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 But and like, you know, I think it's destructive though. I think it's destructive to the man. Why? If he if he can if he's not aware and he cannot control. Because what we end up doing is we then end up like not not reiterating, but we end up coming up with new things to start leading the men. Like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm setting set, setting the tone here for people to be you know uh, either on my side uh, going against something here. But I have something I want to show you, and. Uh, you tell me how you feel about this here. Let me see if I can get this. Get this going. All right. So this says here. You can and you can see this, right? Yeah. yeah. OK, perfect. So it says here, I told my husband I hate when he tells his friends, let me check with my wife. Because then the blame is put on me if he doesn't go. This was his response. And then there's also something here. When I said that, I hate when you tell your friends or your brothers. Okay. <clears throat> so I just want to go back to this wording here because wording with me is everything. So <laughs> I told my husband, I hate when he tells his friends. So she came to her husband. I hate when you tell your friends, 
let me check with my wife because then the blame is put on me if he doesn't go. She didn't even say here in a response or sorry, she didn't even say here that I don't let him go. It still sounds like the decision is up to him here. It never sounds like she's hoarding the decision or he or she's um she has the she's giving him permission to or to not. All she's saying is if he doesn't go. So whatever reason he decides to not go, blame is on her. I guess he maybe <laughs> Maybe it's not about that. Maybe it's more about communication. But she's like, she thinks it's a cliche thing where he's like, hang on, I have to ask my boss if I can go out. I know, I, I know, but like with your boss, you kind of have, there, there, there's, a, there's a written, yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's written rules. So like, let's watch the clip here. Let me uh, scroll down a little bit. There we go. What, um, mute button Friends or your brother is like let me check with my wife first <laughs> yeah, little, by his elbow <laughs> press the button by his elbow Ooh. oh that didn't do what i thought it was first. Do. <laughs> <laughs> okay hold on one more time one more time let's get this right all right I want you to tell them what you told me the other day when I said that I hate when you tell your friends or your brothers, like, let me check with my wife first. <laughs> I told you, you need to feel powerful. Y'all need to feel powerful when you when a man do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, all my brothers, all my friends, all my peoples know, if Big Dog don't say it's not a go, it's not a go. <laughs> If big dog say no, I gotta stay, I don't want to be the bad guy. But you big, it's not a bad guy. I'm checking in. You know what I'm saying? I'm making sure the crib's straight. That's why I gotta go home and lay my head down. So you know what I'm saying? So I'm checking in. I ain't making no decisions unless she says it's a go. That's big dog. <laughs> and none of my friends gonna challenge that. None of my homies gonna challenge that. You feel what I'm saying? Because so they he said, know. He said I should feel like the big dog. I shouldn't feel like. Dog. Yeah, you powerful. You. You know what I'm saying? That's respect on your name. What you mean? <laughs> Come here. I want you to tell them what you That's told me. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, all right, well, you say what you say. Uh, hold on. Let me stop this there. Okay. <clears throat> no, please. G go ahead, please. Okay, so from, from what I'm seeing, there's a couple of things going on here. He's he's for one, he wants his wife to feel good and know that she is she has the final say because he's like a married guy and he likes sleeping at home with his wife and not having her be mad at him. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, Of course it's your decision, honey. Uh, but at the same time, he was also saying, like, he's he's checking in, like, you know, that's your partner, man, you know, and then like Partner in fucking everything, partner in crime, partner in like business decisions. If you need something, if the kids, whatever, like are the kids straight? That's usually what it is for me and my part is like, you know, I'll call her and I'll be like, you know, what, how much time do I got? Basically to do the thing, to be myself for a minute before I got to come home and be dad. That's usually what it is. Like just bargaining time in a day. Cause like, you know, you got to work and then you get home and, it should done. Hmm. I don't think he's, I mean, he specifically was trying to make her feel good too, by telling her that she had the, she had the decision, you know, he's, he's playing up to her. Playing up to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he specifically. Is. Mm hmm. <laughs> Do you think that's good to you play? Know what you to like. play. You know, the, um, you don't know what she's like. You don't know what she's like. Fucking, uh, when she's pissed off. She might be. She might be really nasty. If <laughs> you fucking nuts. Okay, now, now here's the thing, though. Okay, I'm gonna. It sounds like. It sounds like he. You're a victim. Mm. Here we go. CSI. Yeah, definitely. I agree with it that. sounds like he is not the captain he is not the number one in his household 
He said no, big dog. Yeah. He referred to her as big dog and then f- held up the arm to show strength in the house, to show strength, meaning is she the strongest person? Yeah. Yeah. She's the boss. Now that's, you see, that's what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing somebody say I'm checking in with my wife. No, no, no. Somebody checking in with their, like, we've Some all had a boss. We've all had a boss, someone over us, check in with us. You know, some dogs like a house that, to come home to. Other dogs like to, you know, roam around. That is true. That is true. But <clears throat> you can have more than one thing. You can roam around and have your own home. And really? you can also, you know, not roam around and have your home. It still be, you still be the king of your home. It sounds like he's putting the, literally the king title on her, not a queen title, but a king title because He's calling her the big dog. And then when she says, I don't want yeah, to be the bad her, guy. If you call her a big bitch, then it's a fight again. It's no, well, he doesn't I, have to refer to her as that. You this know, guy's just trying to avoid a fight, man. But no, why does it have to be a fight? But you see, here's the problem now. Why is it a fight? We're, let, we're, we, have to, we have to peel this all the way back. We have to peel this all the way back then. Let's go to the second layer. Why would it potentially be a fight? Where is he going? Well, I don't know. Uh, no, we're, gi- we're giving up. We're giving scenarios here. Like, where where could it go? Yeah, but these are, these are strangers. I'm just I'm prefacing it by saying I don't know what their relationship is like. But if she's playing up for the camera about how she doesn't want to be the bad guy or whatever, but yeah, he's probably going to the bar or fucking wherever. I don't know. He's going out with the boys. What do you do when you go out with the boys? What do I do? Yeah. Well, I don't check in with no woman. <laughs> not now. <laughs> I'm not checking in with no woman. But uh, listen, I understand the idea. You don't live with listen. You don't live with no, no, no. So you don't have to check in with anybody. No, no, no I don't have to check in with anybody. No, but yeah, I understand right. that idea. I'm not. I'm not against or opposed to the idea of I live with a woman and I'm out somewhere. Yeah. I'm probably supposed to. I probably said to my woman, hey, I'll be back by, I finish work. She knows I, what time I usually finish work. So if I'm home, if I, so if let's say I finish work at five, I'm usually home around six, 6.30. If it's eight o'clock and I haven't checked in with her, I understand her feeling a way about me. Hey, something could have happened to me, where it's going on, blah, blah, blah. So I get where the idea comes where, hey, you know what, let me... Ch- Maybe at around 6.30, my boys called me and said, hey, why don't you swing by? Let's go do this real quick, blah, blah, blah. All right, let me check in with my wife. Hey, hey, how you doing, babe? Uh, this and that, I'm, I'm heading out, blah, blah. But that's because we have a lot together. You know, I, I understand that. I'm not opposed to that. We have a lot together. We have time in. We have experience, history, all of that. We may have children together. We have shit. We have shit to do. So if, you know, one half doesn't show up today to work, it's like, okay, well, why couldn't somebody call in and tell me, hey, they're not going to show up today? Like, we could have worked around it. So I understand checking in. But I don't need to play up my partner now to then have them be the bigger person than me. That That's the part now where I don't understand. And once I hear that, it makes me feel like... But let's, but let's look at the tape. He says specifically... I told you, he says to her, because they've already had this conversation, but now it's on camera. Because she so don't like a- it. Because she don't like it. He's not listening. He's not listening that's to right. her. We're, and we're, that's the, see, that's the, we're, we're, we're peeling it back. We're peeling it back. I'm sorry, but we're peeling it back. If this is all about okay. communication, the first thing is communication. The first thing she said is on the post, and it says, I told my husband I hate it when. And he still continues to do something. If that's your wife, why do you still continue to do, to do something yeah. that she hates if it's not conducive but, to the family? Yeah, but you know she doesn't mean that. It's, she doesn't actually mean don't check in with me. No, but she hates the be, the big dog. The, she hates the whole idea that you're putting blame onto me. Is there a way that you can check in with me and not put blame? And that's what I'm saying. There's two things here. He can mm-hmm. check in, but it's the way he's doing it. Why does he have to take it to that level of, oh, no, you the big dog, you the man, you the man, because we all know if you're the big dog and there's a problem, who's who okay. has to who has to be addressed? The big dog. So she's, yeah. it's inevitable. And he doesn't understand that because you want to know why he doesn't understand that he's lost in the dating matrix. He took the blue pill and he needs to goddamn wake up. He needs to he needs to wake up. He needs to wake up. All right. This idea of of and that comes from that's another uh, iteration of happy wife, happy life. He thinks she's happy being in control. She is not happy being 
in control. She's constantly telling him, I hate it here. When you're the boss, you get blamed for when it doesn't go well. It's not going well. And she gets blamed. And how does she know when it, it doesn't go well? The fellas say shit when they come to the house. They come by the cookout. They come by whenever. And they say things like, oh, man, you can't even come out, man. Why your wife won't let you? And then she looks at him like, well, I didn't say you couldn't go. I never said you couldn't go anywhere. And he looks at her like, yo, babe, but you the big dog. You know what I mean? But you saying like, no, you the big dog. But he's not. He's not. She wears bigger jeans than him. And not because yeah, of her hips. I bet she does, though. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. Men need to wake up from this blue pill society of ideology of thinking that women are supposed to be put on a pedestal. And I'm talking about not just your woman, women in general. Women are supposed to be put on a pedestal. Men are supposed to bow down, cowardly, walk around eggshells around them, not really tell them how they feel, but yet they constantly want communication from us. They constantly, yeah. like, it, it's, it's... Who, who hurts you, man? Who, who hurt, hurt me? you? I did. Yeah, you, I did. I hurt myself. I, you, bow down. you know what? You know what? Okay, I'll tell you who hurt me. I'll tell you who okay. hurt me. You know who hurt me? My father. Maybe it's a, but my woman ain't asking me to bow down and walk on eggshells. Yeah, because you're, you know why? Because you're a man. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a man, God damn it. <laughs> but no, seriously, like, like just that idea though, like who hurt you? My father not being around, showing me what he acts like in front of a woman to give mm. me more of an idea of how to handle my emotions with an, with a woman how to put them away and how to expand and how to uh, and actually express them cuz you can you can't just as a man we all have we're human we all have emotions but as a man you're not supposed to act on every emotion we're supposed to be stoic at times like if we acted on every single emotion and went up and down with our women they wouldn't know how to respond to us they go up and down we know how to respond to them because we care for them. We provide, we protect. So we're at times her, she's going to be here. We have to protect. There's time where she's going to be there. We got to provide like, it, so we we're accustomed to that. She is supposed to only understand that I only, that if I am ever upset, stay away from me then. Cause there's no, there's nothing women can really do when there's men who are upset. Women are not breaking up fights out in public when two men are fighting. We don't want that. We'd rather another man do that. We, you know, like that's not ideally we want, you know, the fight to be broken up, but we don't want a woman to go separate a fight between two men. Why would we want that? There's so many things that can go wrong. What if she's possibly pregnant? What if like th th there's just so many things here, like the variables in here. We don't want that. Send another man in there to go separate another fight between two men. So it's like just this just this idea that, man, when I see this, it's like, yo, man, I, I just don't want to see another soldier falling. I want to help. I want to help because when you're not able to, when you're, when yeah, you're not able to communicate what you really, lead. sorry, some soldiers, lead, some soldiers lead and others follow. I There's got to be a command. And, and, and it sounds like in his household, she's at the top. And but that's a problem. But that's a problem. That's a problem. That That's a problem because look, she's already complained. Like she's complaining. I don't want to be the bad guy. Basically. Whether it's serious or not, she's still complaining. I don't yeah, want to be a bad guy because bad guys make the tough and executive decisions. The boss makes yeah. the tough executive decisions. Be the boss and be the person who makes the tough decisions in the house. You know what? My fellas want me to go out tonight. Look, babe, I'm going out this weekend, but uh, next time, or you know what? This time I'm going to stay in, but next weekend, next time they call me, I'm going out just so you know, so we don't have no problems in the future. If he says something like that, hella different. Hella different. I just think he doesn't know how to handle dealing with the woman because in his head, he just thinks giving her control is okay. And I don't think that, and that's, it's not right. They don't want that. Women don't want that. Women want control in certain things. They don't want to control us. Once they're able to control us, they're going to start looking for another guy that they, that want that, that denies that access of control because that's what a real man is. I don't know. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. I don't know. I'm not rich and I'm not lying. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But you that's, tell me, man, like, well, that's an interesting analysis. I, I like, I like that uh, perspective on it. 
I, uh, I, I believe that, you know, women want to, women want to, women want to look at their man. Do you find it easy to be vulnerable? Sorry? Do you find it easy to be vulnerable in front of other people? No, and especially not in front of women, no. I don't even so like a woman seeing my penis um, um, flaccid. Feel vulnerable why? then. Because she has to see me in a triumphant pose at all time. So what are you protecting then? My inches. <laughs> <laughs> but not being vulnerable in front of somebody um for okay me personally a little bit easier i would say than the average person because i do a podcast so having so yeah. many conversations yeah. a week having so many conversations period you're going to talk about so many different things you're going to lead to this area you're going to follow a rabbit hole like so for me easier than the average guy um in relationships i've been told because i've actually interviewed a few exes um <laughs> Yeah, I actually interviewed a few exes, um, and none of which recorded. How was that? Sorry? How was that? Um, that, that would be crazy. It's I can, very I, tough. I, I, very tough. I had a couple of conversations with a few exes over the years, but they weren't like, they weren't long and they weren't warm, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, this one was, um, I would definitely say, um, very tough because, um, you didn't want, I didn't want to challenge the things that I didn't like that I was hearing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of tough. Cause you feel like, you know, if you feel like you're a caring person and someone tells you that you weren't that caring, you go, when was I not that caring? You know, like, and yeah. it's like, that's okay. not the point right now. Let's keep going. Let's keep going to everything that you got to say about me. But like, cause I, we don't want to so get into if, a back and forth. What if, what if she was, what if she had interpreted your aloofness as uncaringness? And they see that's another thing too, because then now when you if you actually ask when was I not uncaring, and then they give you a scenario, and you're like, but that's not showing I care or not. Right. That you know, and right. that can confuse something. Yeah. That makes it even worse. That well, makes it well, even some worse. Well, some people, some people, some people's language of love, as as they call it, is like um, different. You know, they they expect certain things. Some people want gifts. Some people want uh, time, or you know, like certain expressions. Of, love or whatever you know like they want you to say you know, and do certain things or be around be available yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah they, they call it the love languages or something like that yeah somebody's yeah i think that's what it's called yeah um but everybody's um, got different ones you know people need different things some people need physicality some people don't yeah i need physicality for sure yeah well most men do for sure I, I mean, it, I think it starts there. Like, I had a convers interesting conversation with a woman, and I was like, you know, I told her, you know, listen, I, I, I'm a well aware when I'm saying things that are spicy. I'm well aware when I'm putting extra sauce on things, right? So I, I said to one lady, and I was like, oh, this young woman, I was like, I don't even know if I like you until I stick my penis inside of you. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe... She's like, you know, I feel sorry for you that, you know, you you ha you need to um, involve sex to determine your emotions or I don't know, something like that. I don't as soon as I heard emotions or whatever, I checked out. But I was like, yeah. that's the difference between us men and women. We don't lead with emotions. I don't see a woman and be like, there's love at first sight because she might, might be on something, though. That's that's a reasonable I mean, that's a reasonable analysis of the of psychology, like uh, the the need to connect physically before you can be feel comfortable enough to connect uh, emotionally. I think it, but, I, it's like, but let me touch. follow that with saying that I think that might be a common problem among men because, uh, you know, I have the similar issue that if you, like if I didn't girls, like, you know, things would happen with somebody, but it didn't, it wasn't like real. You know what I mean? You've seen a few people at the same time. And like, it's not, you know, you haven't like said the words or like made like a commitment to anyone. You know what I mean? Uh, and people, girls would get upset when, when, uh, you know, you'd sleep with somebody else, but like, we didn't say anything was anything. And for me, maybe it wasn't, but maybe it was for them based on a conversation or a, I don't know, whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so I, I, I also, uh, I like, I understand the 
need for that physicality too. If if we were machines, <clears throat> if we were machines and created by AI with AI intelligence as well, we would physically need machine we would physically still need to actually touch as machines and not just be a a wi-fi connection we would need to plug still plug if you get my analogy of being like <laughs> once again in the dating matrix <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah if we were machines we would still i would still need to plug into the other machine or the machine would need to plug into me well that sounds a little wild i would still need to plug into the other machine <laughs> hey yo what the fuck <laughs> yeah i would still need to plug into the other machine to then connect and be like oh this is my machine this is the machine for me that wi-fi connection is shaky okay yeah. it's shaky and could be hacked there's a reason why to this day we're in the booth and we still need cords we still need cords yeah we well, wouldn't want to get into a relationship with somebody where you didn't enjoy the sex but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. How many relation people are like, you know, I don't want, uh, if you go on dating sites, people, women often say things like, you know, I'm not on here for hookups. Okay. All right. So we have uh, this thing where we call it friends with benefits. And what mm -hmm. people like to do is they say, we don't want to grow into a real relationship just necessarily at the jump and at the beginning. But I do enjoy the physical touch with you. I want to dance naked with you. So how about we just do that? Because that means so much to people. We still need that. And they can go off and get a uh, uh, minimum conversation from some other guy, some other guy, some other girl, whatever. But as long as they're still getting that, because if they weren't getting that and only getting conversations for other people, they, they'd be so socially awkward. They wouldn't be able to, They'll, they'll be stressed, anxiety, all of that happening, running through their body. Once the, you have a chemical balance of, of having fun, just like the dolphins do, that's why they're one of the smartest mammals. But once you have that chemical balance of, of swimming around in these waters, enjoying yourself, getting that dopamine up in your, releasing that dopamine of releasing, you know, that nut, it's like, okay, yeah. Yeah, this means a lot. So now imagine meeting somebody, the traditional way in what we do, you know, we court, we date. All right, yeah, they took you out. I spent some money on you. We had some conversations. Okay, cool. I think we're compatible. And then we do the naked dance. And it's not enjoyable. It's not pleasant. And then, you know, you try it again because maybe that was just an awkward night. Maybe one of us was drinking too much. Maybe we both were drinking too much. Who knows? Whatever, whatever. But then you try it again and it's like, nah, this is not, I'm not, this ain't, this ain't what I want. That everything else that we had before mm, goes down a bit, goes down a bit. But guess what? If we did the naked dance for the first time and it was some of the best naked dancing I've ever done in my life, guess what? Your conversation and everything else goes right out. And that's where, <laughs> that's where potential oh, yeah. comes. <laughs> yeah. After good sex, you, yeah. you see potential in somebody like, you know what? I could be with them. That's why girls often you get. That's why you're not supposed to give them good sex. You have a you're a guy, you're a single guy like myself. I meet a girl. If I give her good, great sex, she's gonna start looking at me at, at, with potential. You know what? I can get this more often. You know what? He's not that bad. His cute smile, his big nose. You know what? <laughs> potential. But if my sex is just mediocre, she'll never look at me that way and desire me. No matter how good my conversation is, she'll just keep me as a friend. Mm. So that's why I say that sex. I don't know if I like you. Until I put something inside you. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I just don't like that, That uh, once again, that I ideology of that what that guy is preaching, calling her big homie. He even said things like, my friends, my boys, my, my, they ain't going to challenge that. They ain't going to challenge her. They'll challenge that because that's why, it gets, that's why she's upset with it because it's still challenged because she knows the boys are saying stuff about her because they probably say it around the house or they probably like, it's probably like a joke that I've been referenced or anything like that. Oh, he can't come out until big dog says he can come out. Why y'all call me big dog? I'm not mean. Tell because him I ain't mean. Tell him I ain't mean, Jerome. Bitch. 
<laughs> and he's like, bitch, everybody be pissed up. You see, and this is why, like, this is why, like, us fellas, like, we all need to hang out. Like, everybody should be hanging around collectively with people who are in their, you know, groups. Like, the one-offs, okay, whatever. But, yo, if you're single, hang around single people. If you're married, hang around married people. And and I mean hang around, like, actually go out with them, not be friends. You can be friends with anybody, but hang out. Like, it only makes sense. It's like... Yeah, well, I agree with that. It's, it's, Although, it, it, yeah, I'll it only makes sense. Fucking- and with married people, it's difficult because everybody's schedule is messed up, especially if you have kids. I guess if you don't have kids, it wouldn't be a big deal. But uh, yeah. with kids trying to schedule that around and, you know, last minute cancellations because it's all some bullshit. Yeah, fucking fun. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't even imagine trying to keep up with a, like a single person now, like going out and partying and whatever. I'd be asleep by fucking like nine or ten. Yeah, useless. yeah. I've been I've been saying this the last couple of pods. I'm I'm gonna settle down. I'm gonna settle. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna settle down, man. I'm tired of this. Enough is enough. You know, enough is enough for me. I'm gonna settle down. Like you poor guy. I really feel for your brother. <laughs> yeah. So check on check on me at Valentine's Day and see how I'm feeling. But I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna settle down, man. Like you know, I'm gonna just pack it in, like. Yeah, I'll just pack it in. Yeah, yeah. I just need, you know, something nice and pretty. You know, early 90s, you know what I'm saying? Late 80s, early 90s model. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Floor shift. You know, you know, you know, just something with a nice, nice paint job. You know, what did Nas say? Don't say my car is topless. Say the titties is out. No, I don't want that at all. I want my car covered up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but remember, you know. no matter what you buy, make sure you check under the hood first. Oh gosh, oh gosh. And R.I.P. to um, Kobe Bryant. I remember hearing the story that uh, he bought his wife. Uh, I think it was a Mercedes Benz, but it was in standard, and she couldn't drive it, so he spent. The car was only like, I think, I say only, but the car was like a hundred and something grand and he spent like over 400,000 just converting it to automatic. Why would you just buy another car? She wanted that one. Happy cool. happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, fuck, whatever he's getting paying, he can waste 400,000. I mean, for to him, that's, the, yeah, to him, that's like, oh, okay, you want the bigger Alexa? Okay, my bad. I, I didn't know you want the regular one. I got the regular one. I'll get the bigger one. So for him, that's nothing. Like, yeah, that's, he could have done that. But Dave, I want to thank you for stopping by on I'm Not Rich. I'm not rich. I'm not lying. I want to thank you, man, for um, coming on the show, man. Like, Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, we got we, we, we to gotta set this up a little bit more often and get, you, get your opinions on things. I like your takes, man. No, thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah, somebody's got to have a devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I sometimes I get a little too wild, you know. So I gotta pull in other men so they can, you know, either remind me that I'm I've gone too far or I didn't go far enough. So well, there you go. Everybody's got different experiences, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect them all. I respect them all as long as I just don't respect someone not wanting to have the conversation but talking about it to someone else. Talk to me. Talk to me. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> once again, you gonna end off with your AKAs? You want you sending them off on the AKAs or? Uh, no, just check me out, uh, Rudy Mother Lover on YouTube. That's M U T H L U V A. I'm gonna put it in the in the. It's Rudy. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the um the description and everything so they can check you out. But uh, once again, we'll see y'all next week. Uh, I'm not rich. I'm not lying. Y'all already know. I'm not rich. I'm not lying.